a successful lawyer in Dallas before this? I mean, you know, that's what you were doing and hadn't worked in higher ed before, but you were on the board of the college. I was is, on the board. I was a yeah. very unhappy board member. <laughs> like most board members. Like most uh, board members. Uh, okay. Except for now. Now my board members oh, are happy. Oh, sure. I'm right. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, okay. So what did you do? I'm sure some things you tried to do couldn't, didn't work. There was probably all kinds of epic struggle, dog fights, to use your <laughs> phrase. What, what were some of the things that you did that really did have impact when you look back on it, that work mattered most to turn this place around? Yeah, well, for, I did a lot of praying. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, which, you know, not to be flippant about it, but yeah. sometimes you just have to drop on your knees and ask for help, mm -hmm. right? Um, but from there, I was honest, right? I said, we aren't very good. This is broken. And we're going to start performing as if we love this institution. And if you love institutions, you reach in, you step outside of yourself, you reconnect to your values, and you do better. Right? Now, if you don't want to do better, that's OK. Right? There are lots of other places where you can go do you. Mm -hmm. right? But if you're going to be here, you're going to do us. Okay. And so our institutional ethos became we over me. The needs of a community supersede the wants of an individual. And because we think that's important to establish a tone, we are mm -hmm. not going to be selfish. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to make very difficult financial choices, and we had to have some tough conversations. But what I have discovered in my life is people are okay with tough decisions, and they're okay with tough conversations if they actually are leading someplace positive, mm -hmm. right? It can't just be tough for the sake of being tough, <laughs> all right? It's got to be tough with a vision. Mm -hmm. And we had a vision. We were going to become one of America's great small colleges. We were going to be responsive to the student needs. And we were going to turn ourselves outward and address the issues of the communities we serve. So the first thing we did on my second day, we cut the football program. That was your second day? That was the second okay, day. Okay, so let's just pause. Um, you're in Texas, we should say. Right. You are a former college athlete yes. from Chicago. From Chicago. How, were you, how did this happen? How did this happen? Like you saw the football field, like you did the math, what happened? So the Boston Sultan group had pointed out, you know, in a very gingerly manner, you might want to cut football. Okay. Right? You might want to think about this because you can't afford it. I mean, we were spending anywhere from 600 to 800 to a million dollars a year in money that we just didn't have. Um, we lost a lot, right? Some might say every game. Um, and we, it, it was, you know, I mean, there were good people there, but it just didn't work. Um, so, you know, we cut the football program. And, you know, there were some people who were upset. Um, but, you students, know, I mean, but, yeah, there were some students who were upset. But it helps. I'm not a little guy. Right. Yeah. So you which, had credibility. Which is part of the problem. It's not like when, me. You're not like, cut the football team. <laughs> right? It makes a difference. It makes a difference. Right, right. It's a different conversation. Totally different. Right. It's a different conversation. <laughs> uh, so, but it didn't make sense for us, right? So right. We, we terminated the football program. Then next up, we created a dress code. And the dress code was important for several different reasons. One, um, there was an aesthetic that we needed to have to be more appealing. Right? Now, people may not like that, but the reality of it is we treat donors as if they are investors. They are investing in our students. They are investing in the vision of the institution. They are investing in the promise of a better day. So you have to be investment worthy. Mm -hmm. Now, we can debate it. We can be mad about it. But that's just, it is what it is. And so we needed our students to have a competitive advantage. But we also, I inherited an audit that had over 30 findings. All right? So it was a really bad audit. Mm -hmm. And no one was going to give us money. But they would give us clothes. Mm -hmm. right? So we had a gently used clothing drive. And the clothing drive allowed me to go into places and talk about the new vision for the institution. People liked it. They trust you with their secondhand clothes. right? So <laughs> they would donate the clothes. We would capture all the data because now you're a donor, oh, right? Smart. And depending upon coming, yeah. the <laughs> kind of clothes you donated, that's how we determine donor capacity, <laughs> right? So if you, if you donated a Versace outfit or a St. John's outfit, you got a call from me, right? <laughs> if you donated something a little lower on the price scale, you got a really nice thank you note from the rest of the staff, yeah. right? Like so. We just, um, you know, brilliant. we had to be creative.